Do you truly believe that you can be wealthy as a business owner? Most of us get involved in business because we want to create a level of freedom. Maybe it's financial freedom, maybe it's lifestyle freedom. However, there's so many business owners that I see have this fixed mindset around their work ethic and how that translates to their financial results. I'm going to hopefully share with you a couple of insights that I've used on my own wealth journey and that's allowed me to create an eight-figure business and create multi-seven figures in personal net wealth at 34. So let's get stuck into it. Now, for those of us who are self-made, right? We haven't been served a, a, a silver platter. We haven't had an armchair ride of an existence. Everything that we have done, everything that we have created has been manufactured of our own volition, okay? We've had to invest blood, sweat, tears. We've had to endure risks. We've had to endure pain. We've had to endure suffering in order to produce the results. However, we get to a point where we have created this neural pathway that leads us to believe that in order to continue to achieve these results, we need to earn those results in the same way. And it doesn't actually work when it comes to growing and scaling a business. What I often see and what I've experienced myself is that you go through that street fighter stage where you're the one that's having to do everything. You're having to manufacture the opportunities. You have to deliver on it. And it's just you're all things to all people. You get to a point of your business journey whereby you start disconnecting your effort from your income, and it feels weird. Now we get to this crossroads, this this kind of dichotomy situation whereby we're like, well, I've got this thing that I've started to create that's giving me the freedom that I set out to achieve in the first place, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like I thought it would because I don't feel worthy, I don't feel that I deserve it, I don't feel like I've worked for it, um, and therefore, uh, we can sometimes, and in many cases, we do self-sabotage. We put ourselves back into the position that we once were because we've learnt that that is where we feel most validated and uh, most successful, uh, but it isn't necessarily serving us. So what do we do about this, guys? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create an ascension ladder in your business. You need to acknowledge that you are going to transition through the stages of being a technician, doing the work, being a manager, overseeing those who do the work, being a leader, basically creating the vision and the strategy that supports the managers to manage the people who do the doing, uh, or to be an investor uh, in order to derive financial benefit from the equity that you create in the world, whether that be through your business or whether that be through uh, other assets that you create. Now, we need to acknowledge that through each of these stages, we must navigate a transition, okay? Um, there's no easy way to get through the, the technician phase. And we need to be prepared to do the work that is required. Nobody else is gonna do it for us unless we transition into manager phase and we hire those people, but that obviously comes at a cost. And the thing there is we need to invest the hard work. Your ideas aren't going to uh, dictate your results. It is going to be your execution. Next, we need to create systems that allow us to elevate into a manager position. I'm not a great manager. I don't have a super high attention to detail. I'm more of a visionary uh, and uh, an investor type. Um, I like to think of the big ideas and I want to have people who are great managers around me to help me implement them and manage the people to ensure that they're supported to be able to achieve the outcomes that we want to achieve together. But we all need to go through a period of management. And the idea there is that we don't want to manage the people directly. We need to have a system that manages the people and we manage the system. And it is only through systems that we create leverage. We need to be able to get out of being all things to all people, of being the biggest bottleneck in our life and in our business and in our wealth that allows us to elevate from that position. And there's a certain mindset that comes with that. Next, we need to then transition from being a manager to a leader because a manager typically looks at what has happened and a leader looks forwards at what will happen. And they dictate the path that the business takes, that the wealth takes, that the team takes. And it's through understanding how you create a vision that we are able to then orchestrate the right people in the right places to achieve those particular results. And we need to acknowledge that as a good leader, as a good entrepreneur, we ultimately are there about creating that leverage, okay? And um, we no longer need to measure the success of our self by the effort that we put in, but it's by the outcomes that we can create. Because the reason why people and business owners, wildly successful entrepreneurs like your, uh, Jeff Bezos and your Elon Musk's and these types of individuals, sure, they've worked hard. However, their hard work doesn't necessarily correlate directly to their results. 
The results are by way of what they've manufactured through the leverage of their leadership, right? And this is where we start changing the way that we measure our success. If you can manufacture a particular result in the investment of an hour and um, it makes you millions of dollars, you shouldn't have to work hard for that because you've been smart enough in the environment that you operate in order to manufacture that result in a small amount of time. Typically takes us longer. But the idea here being is that we want to disconnect the idea that we need to be busy uh, in order to create that. And this is what keeps business owners poor and ultimately keeps them boxed in to that kind of working class mindset. And lastly, an investor. You need to have purpose beyond your business. You need to have purpose beyond your active pursuit of how you choose to invest your time for the production of income. Because if you don't have this, you're going to get to a point in your journey whereby you don't need to work for money anymore. And you're not going to need to do certain things in order to feel important. You are going to be able to manufacture economic independence to a point whereby if you don't have purpose beyond that position, it is going to be empty and it's going to be sterile and it's going to be horrible and you're going to hate it and maybe you aren't just relish in that or you self-sabotage and you destroy everything that you've worked so hard to build. So for me, uh, as you can see, you've probably seen in my previous videos, I've got an animal sanctuary. This is Ferds. He's going to come over for a pat now. Uh, hey, Ferdies. Um, I've always been passionate about animals and he's Aureus. He's getting jealous now. Um, so we've rescued over 100 animals in our animal sanctuary. We do it just for fun. Uh, we fund it completely ourselves. We don't raise money. We don't ask for donations, anything like that. Um, we do this because it's something that we're really passionate about. This is our purpose beyond the business. And the idea is I'm still passionate about the business. I'm still passionate about the things that I'm creating. However, I have purpose beyond my business. And once I've continued to accelerate my path beyond economic independence, because I've already got the financial means that if I wanted to retire, I could, uh, I do it because I want to and not because the numbers are telling me to do so. Oh, this is giving you some valuable insights. If you've got any self-limiting beliefs around financial freedom and uh, how you become wealthy and stay wealthy, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to cover them off. Catch you guys soon.